So, so in this particular case, we're using an 8-inch field slate. But we need a longer slate. I might have hit here to get out. So, you know, this is, you know, could be 10, 12, 13 inches, whatever you need. So you've got to have enough slate on stock. Something to remember, too, if you're going to order a bunch of 8-inch, not so much in this roof because it's a multi-blend, but if you order a bunch of one-color slates from a Vermont quarry, like a, an unfading green, and you blend your roof before you put it on, and you want an extra couple of squares of 12s or 13s, that might be a slight shade different, because those bigger slates could have came from a different boulder or a different part of the manufacturing. And you'll sometimes see mitered hips running up in a one-color roof with a mitered hip a slightly different color. So something we do is if we need a square of 12 to 13s, we get three squares of 13s, and then we'll take the actual 13s and cut them down into field slates and kind of blend them into here. It's a little excessive, but it's nice to have that option rather than having a whole unfading green roof and then a slightly different, you know, hip colors running down. This, this way, stop, stop. There's really no way for water to go through the stepping. And, th and this is a 16 ounce soft copper. It's not a hard, it's soft, so it's a little malleable. You know, you can form it, you can tap it down, and a little more give, and you can pour it to your head. It's a hard copper. It's not have holes in it, or these holes, it's below that, because this will be covered by the next one. The step, you know, it would always fall in water, it would always hit a piece of the top of it, there's no penetrations. It's it's longer and, and more time consuming, you've got to make your pieces and put them on. In the old days, we'll take a bottle of roof that had leaking ridges, and really they were just put together with no flashing. Some red red cement, red devil cement, and uh, you know, not a time for the Dave, why don't you talk about that, uh, that WUCO tool? Oh, yeah. John Stortz carries that. He's one of our sponsors here over in the tent. And this is on the site, copper bending. Super, super tool. We use it constantly. Our nails, no penetration just showing. <laughs> and you're ready for the next row. This is just a, a, a copper ridge. Uh, this one happens to be bent in the shape of a star, which takes forever to uh, to make. <laughs> a lot, a, a lot of roofers or slaters will take take the copper ridge cap and they'll nail it directly into the roof. Um, come back later, put a little dab of silicon or something if you're lucky. Um, there's a better way, and the better way is the, the, the cleat and fastener method. Method. These are uh, these are 40 ounce solid copper straps that, that Joe carries, we use all the time. Um, and what we do is we, we put these into the roof first. So it seems like it's going to take a lot more time, but really you, you can get an assembly line down. You can, you can dry fit your ridge on there, see where you need to be. You can snap a line across your whole roof, which we've done, um, and then come in and install your clips. These tabs are, are, are straight down originally when we installed these. And you put two nails in here, it makes a turn, it comes down to the other side. Um, you slide in your, your ridge cap, and you rivet it 
you know, you drill a hole here and you put your rivet on. The beauty of this system is uh, serviceable. You come in, you drill out your rivets, take your cap off if you have to, whatever section you're working on. The, the other real benefit is uh, we've worked so hard to maintain a three inch headlock the whole way up on this roof. And, you know, why drop the ball and, and have holes right here face shown? In this particular case, the holes further up the roof, whether it's two inches or three inches, whatever math you figure out. And the hole you drill here does not penetrate the slate. So you have true headlock, really, the whole roof over. Um, they're a cinch to install. We've made the hole already. I did that. And you, know, you, just, you just rivet them in. Boy. Very, very important. <laughs> These are brass rivets, um, with, 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 with copper rivets with a, with a, bass, a brass or stainless steel mandrel. They have ones out there with, with uh, just yeah. a regular steel insert. That, that'll rust on you. You don't want that. You want the brass with stainless steel, or brass and copper. Um, we've done hundreds and hundreds of feet of these. It, it's actually, it goes very, very quick. Um, and it's, it, it's strong as heck. This is here for forever, basically. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to solder these, you don't have to rivet these either. If, if you're set up up there and you have your, your, your torch, you know, your uh, flameless torch. Um, I've seen a lot, a lot of times in the city, they'll have this nice little solder joint here too. Um, that's just as easy to break down when you need to repair it. Triangular nailing pattern, which, which um, in construction triangles are where you get your most strength. Um, a lot of saddle ridges you'll see, even new ones after they're done, you go down from the street and you look up, and a couple of them get a mind of their own. They move a little bit. Uh, what Dave likes to do is um, uh, we, we make the triangular pattern, and on his last nail that he puts in, he pre he, he, he pre bends the slate out of position, puts the last nail in and then pulls it into the perfect spot on the line. And that keeps that nail under tension with a slight bend. And um, as long as you don't handle it too much, it, 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 it'll, it'll pretty much stay forever like that. We, we, we use, we're using three inch nails here to, to get all the way through to your deck, in, the, in this case. Two and a half, Dave, or three? These are three inch nails, yeah. I, I push it up a little bit. Now, now watch this, Dave. Dave's pushed the slate past the string line, puts in the last and final nail, okay, now he manipulates that. it back to the line. No way, gravity, you know. With some, with some tension on that nail, that, that, that tight, tight pulling bend. When you do your whole saddle like that, she stays tight. The next slate will help keep it down and push it down. That's a Wuko. John has it. Copper covers the nail just the same. Yeah, that right. It's not supposed to come apart now. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. The OSB on are probably going to fall apart. So I know, right? It's the only thing holding together is you see the shop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 